So we're going to go through and figure out how to uh, construct the Lewis structure of bromine pentafluoride, BRF5. First, we should go to the periodic table and see where bromine and fluorine are. They're both halogens. They both have seven valence electrons. They're in this uh, seventh column in the main group, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they have seven valence electrons to participate in bonding with. Um, and they each want one more electron to have a full octet. Now, another important thing to note here is that fluorine is in the second column. Things that are in the, or elements that are in the first and second column can't have more, uh, they have like a very restricted number of valence electrons that they could possibly have surrounding them. So hydrogen and helium, for example, they have just one orbital to fill, the 1s orbital, and that restricts them to having at most two valence electrons. These elements in the second row, they have a max of eight valence electrons. So the, the idea of writing more than eight valence electrons around an element is ridiculous if that element is from the second column. For the third column downward, it's possible to have uh, what's called expanded valence or more than eight electrons around a nucleus. And so with that convention in mind, we're gonna have to say that anything that's more than eight is wrong for fluorine, whereas bromine could have more than eight. Okay, so uh, they're both in that seventh column, so I need to make sure they both have seven valence electrons. There's one bromine, so that means one times seven, and there's five fluorines, or fluorines, fluorides, I guess it's fluorine since it's a non-ionic uh, compound, it's a covalent compound. So 5 times 7 gives me 35, and 1 times 7 gives me 7. So if I add these up, I get 42 total valence electrons. That's a lot. We're going to be drawing a lot of dots. We can also uh, try to estimate the minimum number of electrons that will be needed uh, through bonding um, to complete the octets. It's a minimum number because bromine can have more electrons in its octet. Um, so we'll have to use formal charge to kind of like distinguish whether or not a particular Lewis structure is uh, optimal. So at least as a first approximation, we would think that both of these elements would want to be surrounded by eight electrons. So that would be a total of 48 electrons. The bromine could have more, or could end up with more, but that's a good start. So we know that um, based on this difference between 48 and 42, that's going to be the minimum number of bonding electrons. Since we have something that could have expanded valence, we should change these equal signs to inequalities. So The number of bonding electrons is greater than or equal to 48 minus 42, so that's greater than or equal to 6. Uh, for non-bonding electrons, it's going to be whatever is not involved in bonding. And it's probably better just to go straight to the Lewis structure and start sketching it out, um, since we'll have to deal with formal charges. Uh, so bromine is going to be the center. At, I, uh, eh. It's going to be the center. Bromine is going to be the center atom. Um, it has. It is the most uh, electropositive atom of the two. Fluorine is more electronegative than bromine. So because fluorine is more electronegative, we would assume that it was not going to be in the center. And in fact, it really can't be because fluorine's terminal. It can't have more than eight electrons, and it only needs one more electron to have a complete octet. So therefore, it's going to be a terminal element. Uh, so we wouldn't expect fluorine to be in the middle of any sort of chain or any sort of like complex molecule. I need to draw five fluorines. It's hard to kind of pack them in. So I'm just going to draw them like this. And then we have to put dots around everything to correspond to the amount of electrons that they start with as neutral elements. So they each need seven electrons. So here's my rough sketch. I have uh, bromine, I have fluorine, all of them have seven electrons. And I know that I'm gonna need more than six bonding electrons or more than three bonds 
because I need to have everything bounded together at least once for this to be a real molecule. What I'm going to do is just connect the dots for now. So I'm just going to find dots uh, from a fluorine and a bromine and connect them, and then we'll see what happens when the dust settles. Okay, so at this point I have a fluorine connected to a bromine through a single bond at every case. And I also have two electrons left over, this one and this one, which will be a lone pair on bromine. So there we go. Lone pair. Let me get rid of that early, earlier place where it was. Okay, so looking for octets. The fluorines each have eight electrons, two from a bond and six non-bonding ones. Bromine has one, two, three, four, five bonds and two electrons. So two lone pair electrons. So that's 12 valence electrons for bromine. That's more than an octet, but we said that that was allowable. So uh, let's look at formal charges. Um, so the formal charge for fluorine in each case, since they're all the same, is seven, that's the number of an original valence electrons for neutral fluorine is an atom, minus the number of lone pair electrons, six, and also taking away half the bonding electrons around each fluorine. So there's six lone pair electrons around each fluorine, and there's also a bond or two electrons that are bonding electrons. So that's where that six and that two comes from. We're gonna divide the bonding electrons around the fluorine by two, accounting for one of them going to the fluorine, one going to the bromine. That's the idea behind it. So we end up getting seven minus six plus one, or just zero. So these fluorines have zero formal charge. The bromine also has zero formal charge because it has two lone pair electrons and 10 bonding electrons. So that's two plus five once you do the math, seven, and you subtract seven from seven and you get zero. So they both have zero formal charge. That's the minimum amount of formal charge that's possible. So there's not really a better way of writing this. I can clean it up so it looks nicer. Let's do that. Okay, so that's like a cleaner way of writing it. Let's make sure that we didn't miss any electrons or cause any problems by making huge errors. So let's look at our structure. We have one, two, three, four, five bonds, which is okay because we have this bromine and it's expanded octet or expanded valence. So at least we, we know that it meets the description of having more than six or equal to six bonding electrons. For total valence electrons, we have five of these fluorines, each of which has six non-bonding electrons, so that's 30. And then there's these two non-bonding electrons in the bromine, so that's 32. And then we have five bonds, that's 10 more electrons, so that's 42 electrons total. So we didn't create or destroy any valence electrons, which is good. It's a good indication that we're not causing any huge errors or making any huge errors. Okay, now we have to figure out what the geometry of this is. We've already figured out that each of these elements has a formal charge of zero. We figured out the Lewis structure. So all the bonds are there, all the electrons are there. We just have to figure out what the actual geometry is. If you look at the central atom, bromine, you see that there are actually six different places where electrons are found. Each of the five single bonds and this lone pair. So what that means is that since there's six places electrons are found, the parent geometry would be square, sorry, um, octahedral. The parent geometry would be octahedral for six places where electrons are found. So we don't have six elements surrounding the bromine, just five elements and a space is going to be filled by electrons. So instead of calling it octahedral, we are going to end up calling it uh, square pyramidal. And the square of square pyramidal, pyramidal refers to how the bottom is going to be 90 degree angles, roughly. There we go. So each of these 
trying to draw 3D, not trying to draw acute and obtuse. So each of these angles is in fact congruent to each other. They're all 90 degree angles. Below is going to be uh, a vacant spot that's, that's filled by uh, just electrons but no actual elements. And there will be fluorines like this. So octahedral with a lone pair in the bottom position. So this is square pyramidal. And each of these bond angles will be about 90 degrees. That's how you do this. That's how you go from the compound formula, BR5, sorry, BRF5, all the way to molecular geometry.